welcome to another edition of Squid Kick Radio. I am your host, as always, Elias Powell, and I am joined here with both Riley Pollock and Harry Burton. How are you doing today, boys? Doing fine I'm pretty today. Good. Awesome. Well, we've got a uh, we've got an exciting show today. We have tons of tons of football related news from the inevitable collapse of Riley's favorite league, the AAF. We've got some CFL Combine news from you, as well as we are going to rank the top five quarterback in this NFL draft coming up. But I think to start the show today, we have a newsworthy retirement coming out of the NFL in that Rob Gronkowski has officially called it quits. Tons of speculation in here. Um, It's a lot of people are saying he's not going to retire some people are saying he will. Uh, let's just start there, boys. What do you think? He's, uh, he's going WWE. Like, that's it. He's already jumping off ladders. You can see it now. <laughs> yeah, Gronk, Gronk had his fun, honestly. I think he did all that he needed to do in the NFL. And, like, good on him. He had a great career. He played nine seasons, had almost 8,000 yards receiving and 71 TDs. And funny enough, the 71 TDs in the amount of games he played was... Good enough for 0.69 touchdowns per game. So in Gronk fashion, he goes out on top. Yeah, and what a way to... Is that a real thing? That is a real thing. Yeah, and what a way to go out on top, winning another Super Bowl. And, I mean, I think think it's a good call. His body's broken. He wasn't really effective. The the Patriots used him majorly as a lineman for most of the season and that's just gonna gonna catch up with a guy but kudos to a uh, a fantastic career in the NFL and yeah there's yeah, there, there are lots of lots of reports that you know come later in the season he's gonna get the call from Tom Brady and he's gonna come out but I I just don't see it I think Gronk is gonna gonna live his life to the fullest and Man. the amount of braces that that guy had ha- had on like his arms his legs a lot of concussions. I mean, you just the way he plays was just not a style of game that he could play into his late thirties. Yeah, I agree. And his game is just so physical. You know, he he loved bumping into the big guys. You know, he loved getting into those dog fights in the trench. But it it does just catch up with you. And I think the Patriots knew that going into this. But I mean good for Gronk I mean he had he was one of the most feared tight ends I would say up until last year realistically but just couldn't just couldn't do it and you hear this a lot from retiring athletes you know they don't they don't want to retire no one really wants to retire it's just your body eventually just shuts down and says you know you can't you just can't do it and that's probably where Gronk's head was at you know um so kudos to a big career Moving on a bit here, though, we've got uh, we've got some news out of the CFL, and we might as well we might as well lead with the CFL here, Riley, and that's I the like combine. There, let's chat about the combine. You, I know you were telling us a couple days ago about um, particularly one position that absolutely blew everyone away. Um, so why don't we why don't we start with that? Yeah, it's uh, there's some pretty exciting news out of the CFL as. Canadian quarterback Michael O'Connor from UBC has been called one of the most pro-ready Canadian quarterbacks to ever participate in the Combine. So, I mean, he's played five years at UBC. Him and Noah Picton both finish it up there five years. Um, O'Connor might O'Connor might actually have one more year left, actually. So, he uh, he's a beast. He's an absolute monster. Um, and I think he legitimately can be a starting quarterback in the CFL. He had some pretty good numbers at the Combine. His throw speed, his throw power were up at the top out of all the quarterbacks. So, I mean, I know we've said it before with Brandon Bridge. Noah Picton looked to be pretty good. We've had Mueller in there. But Michael O'Connor might be the real, real deal as a Canadian quarterback. Yeah, and that is a rare statement. Well, I mean, you just not gotta really, keep You got to really keep pushing better. for these Canadian QBs. Like, one day we're going to have one. So, you know, you just got to keep hoping. Yeah, no doubt. We've heard it lots. You mentioned Brandon Bridge. He was supposed to be, you know, the next big thing coming out of coming out of college, but did not Although translate. How, so, 
we'll we'll see how we'll see how this UBC quarterback you know translates into the CFL. But I mean, just thinking about how we, this has happened in the past, I don't have very high hopes. You know, he's gonna have to go through the system, probably be a backup for four years. But we'll we'll see. What other uh, news and noteworthy things do you have coming out of the combine for us? Well, it was the first time that international players were in attendance at the combine, and they did it over Facebook Live and CFL.ca. Um, the, they broadcast the entire combine, and there was over seven hundred and fifty thousand total viewers for the weekend, and a lot of them came from Europe. So. I mean, Randy Ambrosi might be onto something with this whole global thing that he's got going on in the CFL because there was five or six different European countries that were in the hundreds of thousands watching this combine because there's players from their leagues in it. So it's putting giving them interest. And I don't know, I think this might be a big move for the CFL. Uh, German linebacker Theodric Hansen was probably the best global talent in attendance. He had one of the top uh, jumps, broad jump. His shuttle run was really good, three cone. He was just an absolute beast, and I could see him uh, sliding onto a CFL roster when uh, training camp comes along here in the next month. Yeah, well, and let's just also, let's pump the brakes here for a sec on what stood out to me as an interesting statistic, that the CFL had over 500,000 views of their combine and they did it through Facebook Live and their website. Everyone in Canada knows TSN is the big dogs with the CFL. They own the rights to broadcast it. But TSN doesn't feel that the draft would be get enough viewership to actually put it on TV. So the NF or the CFL, sorry, has to then go ahead and do something like Facebook Live and use their website which i think is absolutely hilarious and just continues down the road as one of the many blunders tsa canada's sports broadcasting news network has done i'll agree with you there it's a blunder by tsn but good for the cfl i mean they're going to be gener- generating revenue from those views and those comments and those clicks and if that money's going straight to the cfl it's only good things um i don't know i'm, I'm assuming tsn owns the streaming rights for the CFL as of currently, but that can only be lasting for so many more years. And, you know, the CFL could get a following on the internet. Who knows what what the internet and TV will look like five years from now. And if all of that um, money could be offset through internet revenue from TSN, I don't know. CFL could be uh, moving on up in the world. Yeah, it's. I have the exact numbers here. So it was almost 756,000 fans viewed the live streams of the event. That number's up 60% from last year, and 62% of those views came from international markets. So Italy had 302,000 views, France had 80,000, Germany had 73,000, and then Denmark and Finland just a, just a little bit under 10,000 each. So really, like... <laughs> of the views from international markets, that's huge. Italy especially, 302,000 people. Yeah, that that is is interesting. And it will be interesting even more so to see how that translates throughout the season when we're actually playing games. Because, you know, word can spread. You know, they have players in the combine itself, peaks interest, they tune in, they want to see how they're their their own players going to do. But it would be, it'll be nice to see how that translates into the actual season because TSN is limited in their actual reach on where they can get to. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see where that goes to other CFL news in coming out of Saskatchewan. We had a potential NFL preseason game going to mosaic stadium and it flipped it back and forth a couple times but Riley why don't you why don't you break down what actually happened there in Regina well it's a lot of he said she said a lot of rumors going around and so basically the riders were accused of not wanting the game they've come out and said that's not true but they don't know if they could put a proper product on because the NFL wanted the game between the Raiders and the Packers on a Friday evening. And the Riders play, I believe, a 4 o'clock game on the Saturday afternoon. So they didn't think that they'd be able to get the transfer right. 
There's some things about financials that maybe were a little mischievous from who was trying to bring the NFL game to the CFL stadium in Regina. So I think just a lot of moving parts that couldn't combine to make one thing great. And uh, I don't think the blame falls on the riders because technically they don't own the stadium. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's tough. It's tough when you do have that conflicting schedule. You know, you want one game Friday. Riders play Saturday. Personally, I don't buy it. You know, you have you throw enough money at something, it's gonna happen. You can build a full on, you know, uh, concert world tours, you know, stage in a day if you have the manpower and the yeah, money I- behind it. So that doesn't seem to be an issue. But I mean, it's disappointing. Regina had a had a chance to get a get an NFL game, but it got nixed. Which yeah, and apparently the Bombers and possibly the Eskimos are in on trying to get it now. So that'd be sickening if the Bombers got it instead. It would. It would. Well, well let's uh, let's switch gears a bit here out of the CFL and just coming, I guess, out of the headlines today, Riley. Uh, what's going on with the AAF? They are in deep water right now. Yeah, it appears that they're in no water because they are no longer. Um, the AAF came out today. There was some reports today that they were going to suspend the league, suspend operations, and early this early this afternoon it was confirmed. So the league lasted just eight games into its first season. The majority league owner and Carolina Hurricanes owner Tom Dundon pitched two hundred million in investments. He only invested seventy million, but that was just fifty two days ago. He lost seventy million dollars into this league just fifty two days ago, and now he has suspended the league. That doesn't mean that it's disbanded or folding. Suspended just means that it's kind of like in limbo, and that's unfortunate for the players because they are still technically under contract and won't be able to go to, say, the CFL for camp unless they fully disband or fold the league. So tough for those players. They're not going to get paid, and they can't play anywhere else. So it's it's just a mess, and I kind of predicted it before the league even started. Yeah, you definitely were right with the AAF. I gave it a little bit too much credit. I thought maybe this could pull through. There's also talk of, you know, having no cooperation from the NFL Players Association in trying to create what they wanted this league to be, which is essentially a farm league for the NFL. But, you know, lots of legality around that, and they just, the NFL PA was just not able to play ball with that. So Yeah, well, the PA is working on a new collective bargaining agreement right now, so I think the last thing they need is joining a league that gives up all their young players to a different league, you know? Like, you can't you can't just give away your extra players to a league, like injuries and insurance and all that. And I think whoever started the AAF just kind of blew it. They, they were counting on the NFL's participation without any really evidence that it would ever happen. So it just, it's just a miscalculation and... Once again, a spring league doesn't work in America. Yeah, Harry, what are what would your th- thoughts be on the the AAF? What is something they could do that I would have played protect- fantasy. I, I like I don't know. That's interesting. I no, I don't know any of the players or the teams except for that one that has a funny name. Um it would have been a good opportunity. Nobody else out there probably knew a whole heck of a lot about them. No, you have to be play- a pretty big homer. To know the teams, yeah. I would have played. I would have played the fantasy, and I I probably caught only a few quarters of a few games. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know how the NFL is doing for views and how much fantasy has helped keep the NFL thriving. But I, I believe don't know. the NFL had seven of the ten most viewed programs in America last year. Yeah, oh, NFL really? okay, NFL well, still doing so fine. Right <laughs> the NFL likes to make a big deal when their ratings slip maybe 2%. But, yeah, that's going fine. Gambling would have been something that would have uh, helped this league for the better. Get viewership, open up gambling, you know, let those people make those bets. Fantasy football, the whole nine, would have attributed to some success of the league. Here's a question for you, though. Does the XFL 
suffer the same fate. I mean, they're going at pretty much the exact same time as the AAF did. And apparently they're not going to allow anyone with a criminal record into the league. So even if you have like a DUI, something like that, you can't play in the XFL. Where are they going to find players? Yeah. yeah. You got to sure. you got to think that uh Vince McMahon has a has a better plan than the last time he tried this, but again, you it think. is Vince McMahon, so you never know. It's going to be exciting to see how that one unfolds. Yeah, and I'll put I'll put a bit more trust in Vince McMahon with the XFL, you know. They've been also been able to learn from the AAF and see uh sort of their shortcomings and what they can do to prevent that moving forward, but it's another league, so we will just have to see. Well, we chatted about this on our previous episode from the other week. We are now going to get into some breakdowns of the, I guess, college players coming into the NFL through the draft. And we are going to kick that off this week with our top five quarterbacks. Riley, you are going to be spearheading this why don't you why don't you preface this new segment for us and tell us what we can we can come to expect? Well, I'm gonna take the top five players from the NCAA that are going into the draft and do it positionally. So we'll start with quarterbacks, receivers, and then running backs. And if there's time, maybe add some tight ends and maybe just general defensive players before the draft. Um, so I've just kind of done some mocking and done some reading and found my top five quarterbacks this week and I'm gonna tell you where that they are gonna get drafted and by who this this year and if I go like two for five I feel like that's a win because I've seen about a thousand mock drafts in my life and these so-called specialists usually run at about 30 percent correct so um it's hard to be it's hard to be correct and really predict where athletes are going Definitely. Well, why don't you why don't you start us off with probably e- the easiest one in uh, Kyler Murray? I guess I the think, question is: Is he going to Arizona? I think Kyler Murray is going first overall to the Arizona Cardinals. Cliff Kingsbury is the head coach there now. He loves him and said that he would take Murray first overall if he was an NFL head coach, and now he is and he can. So I just. I don't see him not taking him. They must have said something to Kyler Murray that made him leave baseball and enter the NFL draft. And I just feel like he's going first overall to the Arizona Cardinals. Um, Eli, you've you doubted it a couple of, like a month or so ago. Have you changed your opinion on this at all? Um, you know, with what's come out over the past couple weeks, it's kind of hard to dispute that. The Cardinals are basically coming out and saying they're going to do it, but we've seen stranger things happen. You know, um, it is the draft. They could be pulling this, you know, this big facade over, you know, who they're going to pick, maybe shake up the draft board and whatnot. But I mean, it's, it's looking good. It's not going to look good, for instance, for the Cardinals themselves, drafting a quarterback last year and basically giving up on him after a very dismal season. They must not like what they've seen, so they're going to go the route of Kyler Murray. They've got to be able to get something for Josh Rosen, though. They will. They... They'll be able to get some, so, uh, probably like a third, if not a later pick, but they'll they'll get something for him. He's, But his time is running short, but that's sort of my two cents on that. All right, well, my number two pick in the quarterback mock draft will be Dwayne Haskins, but he's not going at six where some people think he is to the New York Giants. I think the Giants are going to skip over him and take a defensive player at that six spot because there's a few quarterbacks that will be available in that first round, I think. I think Haskins is going to fall to 13 and go to the Miami Dolphins. So... The Dolphins have no one. They've got Fitz Magic there, but he's only good for four games a season before he goes back to being awful. So I think the Miami Dolphins pick up Dwayne Haskins. Harry, we were talking before this, and uh, you might disagree with me. Yeah, I don't know. I just I, I see him on the Giants. Uh, I've heard just incredible things about him so far. And, I mean, the, the Giants are the biggest need right now for a quarterback, other than... I guess Kyler Murray going to Arizona, but that seems like a very particular need for the Dolphins for for Arizona. Yeah, well, who knows? But skins. (laughs) 
you got to think eventually the Giants clue into the fact that they're going to need a quarterback sometime soon. And well, Harry. Maybe they trade for Josh Rosen, you know? That's maybe a that, possibility. Maybe that I happens. I also thought maybe, maybe the Bengals would trade, try to trade for Rosen to, uh, the to replace their boy, their... Um, Andy Dalton. Here. There we go. Thank what, you. What? Yeah. Andy Dalton's not that Karen. old. He's got a few years left. But I just yeah, don't but think he's, he's not that great. good. Yeah, he's just not very good. Well, the Bengals are never Andy really Dalton that good. is the epitome of mediocre in the NFL. It's like if you want an, a mediocre quarterback, you compare them to Andy Dalton. I won a bet last year because I picked Cincinnati to be last in that division. It wasn't looking good because I think they started like five and one or six and two in, or something. But uh, they blew it in typical Bengals fashion, and I'm so happy for that. Yep, no doubt. Um. Speaking of the New York football giants, at pick number 17 with their second first round pick, Drew Locke from Missouri will go to the Giants. This is where they get their guy. He's going to be the one to take over the reins from Eli. Um, I think Eli will play this season out and train whatever quarterback comes in to throw picks to useless receivers, I guess. I mean, that offense is brutal. They, I don't know how they could throw a rookie QB into there. Saquon Barkley is the only one with top-end talent in that entire offense. So just let a kid sit. Let Drew Locke sit, who's going to go 17th overall to the Giants, and uh, maybe start him next year. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, It'll be good. Worked out pretty a, well for Mahomes. Yeah, and they could get a good defensive player with that earlier round pick, sure, sure up that defense a bit. But um, next on your list, Riley, is I think one of my favorite um, quarterbacks in the draft. I think he's going to be a bit of a steal in the late in the late rounds here. So why don't you uh, why don't you preview that for us? Well, if you're talking about Daniel Jones, which I am, that, yeah, um, I think he goes in the first round, and he goes to the New England Patriots at number Oof. thirty-two. Wow. Tom Brady is old. That's spicy. Everyone knows that he's old, and they couldn't keep Jimmy G around long enough to replace Tom Brady, so I think Daniel Jones is the new Jimmy G in New England. What else do they need? Are they going to draft a tight end in the first round? I mean, come on. They, they're they just good. They don't need to draft anybody. They're just good. So take Daniel Jones, groom him behind Tom Brady for his, Brady's last two seasons, and uh, then he'll just be an all-star for 15 years. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's tough to argue with that because yeah, it it's is. Bill Belichick. Uh, yeah, okay. That's and a, that's I, a good call I think it'd be I think it'd be a good fit. You know, he's one of my favorite quarterbacks in, in the draft this year. He had, a, he had a great season. Duke's not really a football school, so it's not really like they were breaking headlines, but when they were, you were healing, hearing about Daniel Jones. So definitely, definitely going to be, to be interesting. I could see him... Some teams believing in a little bit of hype around him and uh, maybe maybe taking him a bit earlier, but we, we shall see. All right, and uh, my final quarterback on my top five list is Will Greer from West Virginia, and this is an interesting kid here. He really, really has some upside to me. I think he can be a really good quarterback, but his decision-making isn't the best. He... Just he seems to be slipping a little bit, and then he gains some momentum in drafts. And from the mocks I've seen, he can go anywhere from the first round to halfway through the third round here. But I think at the 14th pick in the second round, the Washington Redskins take Will Greer to try and shore up the quarterback position that has been absolutely decimated by injury, terrible QB play, and trading the only quarterback that's actually wanted to stay there. Hey, man, they have Case Keenum now. Relax. Ugh. Case Keenum absolutely <laughs> robbed all NFL teams after that Minnesota season. He, I'm so proud of that kid. Put together one season, and now he can just be mediocre with a bunch of money for the rest of his career. Yeah. Well, Flacco's no. been doing it well. That's so. true. But he did win a Super Bowl. So, I mean. Col- Colt McCoy's there, too, and I've always loved Colt McCoy. Good old Texas Longhorn. But he's not a starter either. So, Will Greer will be their starter. I don't know if he's the answer. But I think he has an upside, but a lot of risk as well. Excellent. Well, what do we have for next week's draft class preview, Riley? Well, I'm going to do receivers next week. Um, It's really hard to do a top five. 
I might go to seven because there is so many receivers. This might be the deepest receiver draft class that since that I've seen since I started paying attention to the NFL. I mean, there is so, so many good receivers, so you'll have to tune in next week, but I might have to go all the way up to seven because it's going to be hard to pick just five. Yeah, it definitely would be. I'm I'm excited. There is some, some absolute rocket of talent, you know, in this draft class coming up for receiver. My personal favorite, Nikhil Harry, just a little, little preview out of ASU. I, I hope he goes in the first round, but it'll be interesting to see where you have him going, Riley. I, have, yeah, I, I hope he goes to the Raiders. Riley, tell me he's going to the Raiders. <laughs> I need a jersey with my name on the back so I can be I don't that know. guy. I don't know if he goes to the Raiders. I don't think he does. I don't think he does. Um, he, I don't think so either. Um, we'll have to see. I really like A.J. Brown. I'll just put that out there. I think that he's, in some people's mocks, he's like the sixth or seventh, but I personally will definitely have him in my top five so i'll just let you guys know that i've heard i've heard uh he could be linked to oakland as well because isn't isn't he uh related to um antonio i have no idea all right i am almost positive he's like uh his nephew so that might uh or cousin or something some relation in there but yeah (laughs) go raiders here on squib kick radio we are football experts um with that why don't we why don't we switch gears a bit we don't we're we're all football all the time here on squib kick radio but big big month in sports has just passed march and obviously march madness this past weekend we have seen the juggernauts of duke basketball get dethroned so let's just um let's do a little recap what how, how have you guys thought about march madness i personally got absolutely destroyed that first Sunday, lost all my money I was going to bet. So it was uh, pretty sour for me. But how, how have you guys had your March Madness? I was killing it in my bracket up until last week. And then if I had just made every single pick I made last week opposite, I would have just won my bracket. <laughs> I yeah, got that's every pretty single, much the vote I'm in too. Every single game wrong last week. So um, I was feeling pretty good, needless to say. I was 15 of 16 on Sweet 16 teams. And I believe that I had four of eight Elite Eight teams. So it was it was not good for my bracket. I was looking good going into the Sweet 16, but it uh, all fell apart. But, I mean, I got to give mad props to Texas Tech. Their defense is insane, and they made their first Final Four so that's pretty sweet for them. And then Auburn made the Final Four as a five seed as well. And they've been shooting the lights out. They had to knock out UNC and Kentucky back-to-back to get to that Final Four. So they're really kicking ass in the tournament. Yeah, two, they definitely wild, deserve two it. wild upsets. Yeah. And uh, how about Duke, though? I mean, they... Uh... Yeah, there's so much talent on that team that you just expected them to win. But They were really young. They were a young yeah. team, and it's been proven that those senior players really do help in this tournament. Um, but they have four potential lottery picks, including the top two in the draft class, probably Zon Williamson and R.J. Barrett. So, it like I know they made it to the Elite Eight, but like, and I know they're young, but is it a failure? I mean, it has to be a failure, right? I would say I don't that know. it is a failure. You know, with college basketball. Uh, you've you've got to win and you got to win now. It's a failure because they were a projected to win the tournament. It's a failure. Their two best players are going to be drafted into the NBA. Where it's not a failure is at the end of the day, they're still Duke basketball. You know, they're they're going to be back. They're going to be yeah, a recruit. top seed next year. It doesn't really matter. But in terms of this season, it's an utter failure. Not making it even at least into the Final Four is awful for them. I don't know that the next time Duke will have a player like Zion on their team, so I think they should. All the Duke fans should really just appreciate what they got to watch this season because it's going to be a very long time, if ever, that they have a player like that on their team again. Given it is upsetting they didn't win, but like Riley said, all those kids are young. If the rules were different in the NBA and you could still go straight from high school into the NBA. Uh, Duke's roster would have looked quite a bit different this year. Yeah, they probably wouldn't have had RJ or Zion if you could yeah. just go straight into the NBA. 
Yeah. yeah. So all I think it's a failure, it. but it's mostly because I just hate Duke. So I'm a Tar Heels fan. They failed as well, but Auburn couldn't miss against the UNC, so that's a tough one as well. But yeah, screw you, Duke. You lost. You suck. Ha ha. Uh, you know, I took I took uh, the Tar Heels to win it all, so I'm I'm more upset by their actions. They look good early, and I think they just got caught got caught on a bad night, unfortunately. But that's how it goes in March Madness. Yep. Absolutely. You got you to play the best basketball every single game. And Duke just squeaked by on two of their last games. Yeah. Like, just That's two very missed true. tips. Like, they were literally inches so away lucky. from being eliminated early. So, I mean, it is what it is. But uh, with that, I think that's all we have for today's show. Uh, thank you all for listening. As always, check us out on social media at Squib Kick Radio. And from myself, Riley, and Harry. We will talk to you next week. Peace. I got you stuck off the real, the, the realness. Think, think, think not, this, 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 this shit's too hot. Too, too hot. Too, 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 too hot. Rock, rock, I rock you, rock, rock, I rock you, you, you and your, you, you and your, your, your face. Dab, 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 your brain, your brain. With your nose bone, nose bone, nose bone. I'm a vampire walking on the surface of the sun, the sun, the sun.